All right, let's do shot plates. <laughs> Bead. This is made by taking a small piece of scrap silver of sorts, sizes and assortments, and putting, I just uh, heated this so it's still hot. And you melt them until you make certain sized uh, half domes, whatever you want to call them. When you cook them on a charcoal block, what's going to happen is it's going to make one side flat, which is radical to keep it from rolling away, and uh, the other side will be sort of round. Now, here I have a uh, shot plate four. I, this is the one I have in front of me, is a uh, shot plate four. Uh, a lot of you guys have bought this one. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is a few have asked on the big one in the center. It's kind of deep and it's really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a cone, kind of goes in like a cone. And it's kind of deep, so if if you take a perfectly round shape and start hammering it in, it's gonna kind of mushroom over the sides. You can't get that silver all the way down into the like tippy tippy tippies of the inside, okay? So what I do for that is I'll heat up a bead and I'll take like a solder pick or really anything and while it's still pretty molten, I'll just touch it and then pull it out a little bit and it'll kind of drag it out, make it more of an egg type shape rather than rounded. Then I'll take that sharp part, put it in there, start hammering it in. And uh, I'll show you that in just a second. So here first we have a bead. <coughs> Excuse me, I just went back to 15 years old right now. Uh, and I'm gonna put this annealed bead of fine silver. I always tell people use fine silver if you're gonna do shots and stuff, you know, for the small ones. It's easy, it's quick. Uh, and when you anneal it, <laughs> sorry, my kid's <laughs> screaming in the other uh, room with grandma right now and it's just, it's just funny she's yelling uh but anyway uh and for the big ones too feel free to use the fine silver uh it's softer it's a lot easier that's if you're doing it with a hammer if you're using a, a press or something for your shot plates uh it really doesn't matter what you're using as long as you soften it as far as metals go copper gold silver brass etc etc i mean brass pretty hard but anyways so here we go let me move this really hot piece of charcoal uh, with my numb dead fingers and let the magic begin so I have this in the smallest of the star pattern type impressions so and you guys have all been have all asked what do I do to keep it from bouncing out plenty of stuff you can do I don't even follow that rule half the time and just lost like 16 pieces of silver <laughs> <laughs> so it happens. It's totally normal, but I'll show you a trick that works. Usually for these little ones, you won't need it unless you oil it up like crazy. Uh, so first step is getting like a first kind of like hammer in there. Don't just hit the hammer and pull away. In a previous video for large stamps, I talked about not driving the hammer down to let it swing and do its thing. You want to do the opposite here and you want to kind of drive it down and every hit, try to hold it down and it'll kind of keep it in place. So here's our little one. Just hold it down. Hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. And you'll start to realize it's only mushrooming out. It's not gonna be going down much more. The farther out it mushrooms, it means it's reached its point of depth and it's gonna just take whatever excess is on top and spread it out to the sides. So then you take that delicious 132 nail punch. That's how you're gonna get this out. Right into the back of the center of it, just a little tippy tappy two. Voila, there you go. And from here, it's on there pretty good. So it's not coming off. You can take it over to a bench grinder, a uh, belt sander, whatever you want, and uh, clean this off, or just use a file. <whistles> take some of it off. And then uh, from there, you can take it into your polishing, uh, buffing wheel, go from your, you know, Tripoli, Zam, and then like a Rouge. So those are the three compounds you wanna use to get a really vibrant shine. If you wanna keep some of that patina on there, and that darkness, just run it on a brass uh, a brass uh, wire brush wheel or something. You'll get a nice satin finish. But then run it really quick under some Zam. You'll still hold a lot of that patina uh, color in your sterling. So there's a small one. And then when you're ready to finally get it off, you can either pluck it off with some pliers or just kind of, you know, give it a nice couple of little taps and it'll start coming right off. Okay? Now, for the bigger ones is... There it is. This might still be a little hot. I just made it. 
so we'll pull it out here. This is what I was talking about with the uh... sorry it's hot so I can't really grab it and like get it in there. No, we're good now. So I might have made this one a little bit too big, which is totally normal, but you get the basic idea. We'll get we'll get the idea down since time is of the essence now and my child is is really really <laughs> not in the mood for me to not be in there singing to her right now since I've spoiled her rotten. I'll give you the basic concept and we'll go from there. This size is obviously too big, so a lot of it will end up mushrooming, but it doesn't matter because it's just a for a show. All right, same thing, drive it down and hold it in there. With this thing being as big as it is, there's a chance it'll bounce out a few times, totally normal. Flip it out and draw some of this metal back towards me. All right. Now we'll drive it into the back. pluck it out and yeah I did make it a little too big so it didn't get all the way down to the point but you can see that uh, instead of it just being rounded with a few little dot uh, impression lines on the side you can see it's starting to get that longer point and it's really just trial and error uh, I don't make my hubs to a certain dimension that I've done the mathematical equation of what gauge and but there has been a few members in the group who I'm like super stoked for the help that have gone out and and done that actual that exact thing for me and made an e a mathematical equation of how much of a x amount gauge uh yada 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 etc and i will i'm having a total brain fart right now and can't think of names but i will tag you uh in the video with that information that you've written down now comes the uh, bigger ones for instance on this one it's the shell Oh, that's, there we go. Just got see that. Now for this one, once again, I didn't measure out if this is the right size. And this is actually a, a shot that I had made like three different times. So this, this might even be fried, but like I said, once again, time is of the essence. And I just want to give you the, uh, the physical action of what it is that I do rather than sit here and try to perfect them. Tape. Right now, I, all I have is some packing tape. Uh, I wasn't really prepared to do these videos today to be honest so uh, I usually use like a painters tape or uh, heavy-duty like electrical tape because you're gonna be smacking and get it smacking it against the back of some metal and it'll start to get little edges and the pressure itself will cut little holes and stuff into the tape I haven't tried it with packing tape yet and this thing's kind of oiled up so we'll see how it goes so for this Let's just uh, wrap it around the back, get the shot like generally where we want it. That ought to be good. Throw some tape over that bad boy. That is going to save your, uh, your butt because that's going to keep that big piece of silver from flying away and you not being able to find it ever again. So from here. I would switch over to a bigger hammer, uh, knock over a torch, not a big deal. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, just really go for it, you know? <clears throat> Sorry if that annihilated your ears this is a very loud anvil but here you get a nice lovely shell and it actually just came out perfect it's insanely hot right now from the pressure and the uh, friction of moving around but That's those larger ones that people have had a few problems with. This is how to do it. Uh, it's really learning your tools is the problem, okay? So instead of going into it 
with the idea that this is going to be easy and then figuring out, oh, it's not as easy as I thought and getting discouraged, uh, just work at it a little bit. I promise you it's going to work. I just showed you right now that it can work and how it will work. Uh, I'm sorry that it did take so long to get like a, a pretty visual shot plate um, tutorial video up. I've just been extremely busy. Uh, we have a baby right around the corner coming out and uh, an insane two-year-old currently here eating up most of our time outside of work. So anyways, uh, it's been an insanely long day. I've been working since early in the morning until now and I believe it's seven something. So I'm very tired. Uh, that's how you do the shot plates. If you have any other questions, just let me know. They come prepared to use. Like I said in previous videos, there's a chance when it shows up it will be rusty. Uh, that's totally normal. Uh, I have a video on how to clean your stamps. It's the exact same process with cleaning shot plates. The only difference is sometimes in those grooves, it's a little bit harder to get the rust out. So you can take some three in one oil, which also cleans rust and put it in there, let it sit there for a little while and kind of swirl it out with a, a Q-tip and stuff. Uh, and then once again, coat it with some three in one oil. And yeah, so if you have one of my shot plates, you're having a hard time with it, get yourself a big hammer, some scotch tape, uh, I'm, I'm ex excuse me, not scotch tape, uh, some electrical tape or painter's tape. This packing tape actually worked pretty well, but as you can see here, that last strike that I gave it cut a, pierced a perfect outline of the shot right here. Uh, but it was the last strike I needed to give it anyways and it worked out fine. But that worked pretty good but electrical tape duct tape whatever you want to use as long as it's a strong sturdy tape that can withstand a few strikes and you want to wrap it around the whole thing because uh, this is oiled up you usually want to put a little bit of oil in there to help pull the shot the shot out some of the some of them don't need it and they'll bounce out on you uh, you can use tape for all of them if you'd like if it makes it easier for the smaller ones you can totally use scotch tape a thin little half inch strip so you can see what you're doing we'll hold it in there and uh, an example of how to clean these up really quick before I leave you guys is this isn't attached to anything now so it's gonna be hard to hold on to you can put it back in the impression it's gonna fit exactly how it should it's gonna lock right back in like a key because the, the shot is now the key and the shot plate contains the hole in your doorknob or whatever so it'll go right back in there and even though it was loose you can still hammer this back into the back of it pull it out and there you go now it's on there you can do the same take it to your uh, your belt sander whatever you want clean it up polish it up all that good stuff uh, and then patina it, run it through some more polish after you've already soldered everything back together but that's the basic tutorial on how to use a shot plate. I know it was short and sweet, but I hope that got all the points to you that you needed. And if you have any other questions, feel free to comment and we will answer them at our soonest convenience. So we appreciate the business and enjoy your shot plates or your new stamps from Buffalo Rutland Company. They're all made with tender love and care.